Okay, so in the previous video, we talked about the uh, protocols for noiseless channel. And these two protocols are the simplest protocol and the step, step, stop and wait protocol. Now, in the stop and wait protocol, the idea here is the sender, when, uh, the sender sends a frame, the receiver should send an acknowledgement frame before the sender can send the next frame. Now, there is a problem with this mechanism or this protocol because it is possible for the receiver to receive uh, the same frame, meaning uh, duplicate, duplicate frames can be received by the receiver. So we now move on to the protocols for the noiseless, uh, noisy channels, which include stop and wait ARQ, uh, go back and ARQ, and uh, the selective uh, repeat ARQ. Now, let's start with the stop and wait ARQ. So this protocol builds on top of the stop and wait protocol. Uh, what happens here is that uh, we add redundancy bits to the data frame and as you recall in the previous chapter, redundancy bits are used for error checking. They can be in the form of CRC or checksum. Now at the receiver end, uh, if a frame is corrupted after checking the redundancy bits, then the uh, that frame is silently discarded and we also introduce a uh, numbering of frames to allow the detection of lost frames as I mentioned previously the standard stop and wait protocol is susceptible for erroneous or duplicate frames being received by the receiver and uh, also in this stop and wait ARQ uh, the corrupted and lost frames must be resent because uh, of course uh, for reliable delivery of data uh, the the problematic frames which can either be corrupted or lost must be resent and in order in order to accomplish that the the sender should maintain a copy of the sent frame and uh, must store that frame until an acknowledgement for that frame uh, is received okay and uh, the stop and wait ARQ uses a timer and if the timer expires without the sender receiving an acknowledgement then it is time for the sender to resend the frame it is also it is also worth uh, noting that the acknowledgement frames can be corrupted while it is in transit it can be corrupted or it can be lost so how do we then make sure that uh, the receiver does not receive duplicate frames? So we do that by using sequence numbers. So sequence number is just a field in the header of a frame. Recall that in the frame format, last in the previous discussion, we have flags that indicate the start and end of the frame. And within those flags, we have uh, headers and trailers. One, uh, one of the fields in the header is the sequence number. Of course, we have the source and destination addresses, as mentioned earlier. So the, uh, how do you select the sequence numbers? Uh, first, you have to select the sequence numbers with the smallest range that provides an ambiguous communication. Usually, it, uh, the field is uh, indicated by the number of bits and also to minimize the frame size. So if you have an M bits long sequence number field, then the sequence number or the frame number will start from 0 to 2 to the m minus 1 and uh, this number uh, the frame numbers will just cycle through this uh, range based on the size of the sequence number field if we have used x as a sequence number then we need only to use x plus 1 modulo 2 as the next uh, sequence number to use so uh, in our discussion i'm just going to use inter interchangeably sequence number and uh, frame number and uh, normally the sequence number is part of the data frame uh, however acknowledgement frames can also have uh, sequence numbers and that the sequence number uh, embedded in the acknowledgement frame indicates the next frame that is expected by the receiver so let's look at a diagram on how the stop and wait ARQ operates. So at the top, you see here the possible sequence numbers to use by the sender on this side and 
the expected uh, frame number to be received by the receiver in this side. And the format of our frame, the data frame, in addition to the, the blue here indicates the data from the network layer, the black here indicates the trailer, and uh, this gray part here indicates the, uh, the header. And embedded in the header field is the sequence number. And the acknowledgement frame on this side, you have again the, the, some control information, and then you have the trailer, and then you have the acknowledgement number. So what happens in the stop and wait ARQ is the data from the network layer, once passed down to the data link layer, then the data link will create a frame, and the frame uh, will include a sequence number. So as you can see here, this frame is in transit. It has the fields, the data from the network layer, the trailer, and the header, which contains the sequence number. So this frame will move to the receiver, and uh, it will be received at the receiver end, extract the data, deliver to the network, and then it will send uh, an acknowledgement frame. And we'll have the next frame number or sequence number that is expected from the sender. Okay, so let's have a more detailed example on the flow of uh, frames when using the stop and wait ARQ. So uh, this is the, the sequence numbers that can be used. So you have your 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this means that if these are the possible values of the sequence number, then the size of the sequence number field in the frame is what? is one bit because you only have zero one and then it cycles back to zero one again zero and one and the same with the receiver so in this illustration uh, we start the timer and then uh, the sender sends a frame and the sender numbers that frame as frame zero once the receiver receives that successfully meaning without error the receiver will send an acknowledgement frame and it will indicate the frame that it expects. So in this illustration, you have ACK1, meaning it is expecting frame one from the sender. So uh, when, when, the, uh, when the sender received the acknowledgement frame, it stops the timer, meaning it successfully sent the frame zero. And then the, the sender will now send a new frame and using the next sequence number, which is one which is also what is expected by the receiver. So while in transit, so it starts a timer for that. Now while in transit, the frame is, uh, frame one is moving. However, the frame is uh, lost, meaning uh, it did not arrive uh, at the receiver end. And when that happens, the timer that was started when the frame was set will time out. And since that the, the sender did not receive any acknowledgement frame, it will resend uh, the same frame that was last sent, which is frame number one. And at this point, the frame was received by the receiver. So uh, the receiver now will send an acknowledgement frame with the frame number or the sequence number that it expects next. And uh, luckily, the acknowledgement was received by the sender, so the timer was stopped. And then, uh, the sender now moves on to the next sequence number, which is zero now, and then sends frame zero. And frame zero was successfully received at the receiver end. And then uh, the receiver is now expecting uh, uh, frame one. However, the acknowledgement was not received by the sender. So again, the timer will time out because uh, the acknowledgement frame was not able to arrive at the sender end. So frame zero will be resent again. And then uh, the operation continues as shown. Okay, so this is how the stop and wait ARQ operates. Now there's a problem with the stop and wait ARQ because as you can see in the diagram, only one frame is active at one time. Okay? So one frame, one time duration, another frame, another time duration. 
Now, this is inefficient, especially if the channel is thick, meaning it has a large bandwidth and long, meaning the round trip delay is long. And uh, to be able to justify this, we start with the bandwidth delay product or the BDP, which uh, specifies the volume of uh, the pipe in bits. So it is the measure of the number of bits we can send out of our system while waiting for news from the receiver. So we take advantage of this in the succeeding uh, protocols. But before that, let's have an example. So let's say we have uh, a link that has a bandwidth of 1 Mbps. And 1 bit takes 20 milliseconds to make a round trip. So the question is, what is the bandwidth delay product? And if the length of the frame is 1,000 1, bits in, in length, what is the percentage utilization of the link? Now, to compute the bandwidth delay product, we simply, we simply multiply the bandwidth, which is 1 Mbps, and then the delay, which is the round trip time. So, it can be computed that the bandwidth delay product, or the volume of bits from the link, is 20,000 bits. Now, the percent utilization, if we have a 1,000 bits size na, uh, frame, then it is only 5%. Okay? So, this is quite inefficient. What we're saying here is the link is capable of uh, transferring 20,000 bits at one time. However, only 5% of that is used if we have a frame uh, of 100 bits and only one frame is traveling on the link uh, at a given time. Okay? So, to take advantage of that, we have the go back and ARQ. So, the main technique being employed in this uh, approach is using multiple frames uh, or allowing multiple frames to be in transit while waiting for the acknowledgement. This is similar to the concept of pipelining in COMSI 132. So what we do here is we keep a copy of the frames in transit until the acknowledgement frame arrives. Now regarding the sequence numbers, the sequence numbers are modulo 2 to the m, where m is the size of the sequence number field in bits. And we also have a sliding window which defines the range of sequence numbers that is the concern of the sender and the receiver. So meron tayong tinatawag na sliding window. Okay. And the sender and the receiver deals with only a part of the range of sequence number. In the previous protocols, uh, for example here, so the size of the sequence number is, uh, uh, sequence number field is 1 bit, so we have possible values for the sequence number 0 and 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, so it cycles to that range. Here, we have a sliding window, and uh, in the sliding window, we do not use everything in the range of the sequence number. We have a sliding window wherein uh, what is contained in the sliding window, the sequence numbers in that sliding window, is what we actually use. And another thing to remember is that the acknowledgement are commutative, meaning if the receiver sends an acknowledgement, that acknowledgement, usually we have the acknowledgement frame having the expected uh, next frame. And if the, if the receiver send an acknowledgement then let's say four the that acknowledgement also acknowledgement acknowledges frames zero one two and three that's what we mean by the acts are cumulative we'll have an example of that later so let's study the properties of the go back and arq so again we have uh, uh, a sliding window and we have a send window and a receive window so let's talk about first the uh, send window okay? and these are the parameters for the send window we have SF, S sub F, S sub N and S sub size so this is the sliding window as you can see here the gray area and uh, the range, as you can see here, is from 0 to uh, 15. Uh, this is the range of the uh, sequence numbers that can be used. Now, uh, 
what is the size of the sequence number field if you have a range of 0 to 15? So that means that the size of the sequence number field is 4 bits. Now, SF here is the indicator, is an indicator the, of the frames, the start of uh, sequence numbers of frames that were not, that were sent already, but uh, no acknowledgement has been received yet. So, uh, this part here, called the send window, uh, uh, f uh, first outstanding frame, uh, these are the frames that are already in transit. So, these are the frames, but not acknowledged. Okay, so, they are still in transit. Now, this side of the sliding window are the frames that can be sent, but not, re but not received from the upper layer. So, meaning if, if the sender receives uh, an event, request to send, it can use this uh, uh, sequence numbers for numbering the frames. So, the send window size here is S sub size is 2 to the M minus 1. Okay? So you have SF, the first outstanding frame, SN, the uh, next frame to send, and the S size, which is the size of the send window. Now, uh, during the operation of this go back end protocol, when the, when the sender receives acknowledgement, acknowledgement frame for frame 2, for example, so after a while, the sender receives an announcement with frame number 2, then the sliding window will shrink, or the send window will shrink, because these three frames have been acknowledged, so this uh, send window will shrink, so SF will now be 3, because this is the start of the sequence number that, ha that, was, that, has, has, uh, that is not acknowledged yet. And it can grow now the the sliding window can now grow uh, uh, for the, the window for uh, the frames that can be sent can now grow so one two three so added uh, new frame numbers one two three so that's why it's called sliding window so whenever acknowledgements are received by the sender the 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 window moves to the right okay now how about the receiver end now in the receiver end for the go back and ARQ, you have the uh, RN parameter, which is the receive window, which is the next frame to be expected. So on the left of RN, these are the frames already received and acknowledged, meaning all of these frames have been successfully received and acknowledged. And this frame is the next frame to be expected. So uh, when RN is here, it means that the sender must send uh, frame number three and uh, this part of the this on the right side of the rn we have the uh uh what you call this the frames that cannot be received until the window slides and when the when the receiver receives frame number three and it is not corrupted then it advances rn to the next sequence number and sends an acknowledgement to the sender uh, for the sender to send frame number four okay so in the go back and uh, ARQ you have only one timer that is used since uh, the first outstanding frame always expires first so we have the SF and the silence of the receiver causes the timer of the unacknowledged frame at the sender side to expire and uh, one of the character, uh, distinct characteristics of go back and ARQ is that the sender resends all outstanding frames, meaning uh, uh, you will see that later. So the sender has already sent frame 6, for example, but the timer for frame 3 expires, then the sender must resend frames 3, 4, 5, and 6, even though the, uh, the sender has sent or the receiver successfully received 4, 5, and 6. So that will be uh, recent, starting with frame three. So this is what hap uh, another illustration. Uh, you have this uh, sliding window. You have this sliding window, and this is the SF first outstanding frame. This is the next to send, and uh, what will happen is uh, 
you have uh, here four frames in transit okay because you have uh, uh, one two three four so this is the these are the outstanding frames four frames so you have four frames here okay? and uh, these are the acknowledgement frames so uh, what's the requirement for uh, the send window size okay? for the send window size for go back and ARQ the requirement is that the send window size must be less than 2 to the m to be able to uh, correctly identify or correctly accept uh, uh, a frame as shown is an example so the receiver window size is, should be one so uh, in this illustration so you have uh, 0 1 2 3 this is the range of uh, sequence number so this means that uh, the size of the sequence number field is 2 bits okay? 2 to the 2 so you have 0, 1, 2, 3 so if uh, the window size here the send window size is 2 to the M so uh, uh, 2 to the M should be less than 2 to the M so the 2 to the M is 4 so the send window size is 3 so start with frame 0 the frame uh, acknowledgement frame was uh, lost sends frame one uh acknowledge frame acknowledgement frame was lost and then sends frame two acknowledgement frame was lost now uh when uh after a time out after a time out okay uh for frame zero then the the sender will send frame zero okay and frame zero uh, the receiver uh, will uh, at this point the receiver will be expecting uh, frame frame two or frame three okay however since the timer timed out it sends frame zero so however frame uh, this the receiver is expecting frame three so but it received frame zero so that means uh, that is not the frame that I am expecting so that will be uh, uh, correctly discarded so unlike here if the size of if the window size is 2 to the m which is 4 so during the process frame 0 will be accepted even though it was not it is not the correct frame to be uh, to be uh, accepted so that's why the main requirement for the send window size of the go back and ARQ should be less than 2 to the m okay so that's the idea so here's an example uh, of uh, a flow of uh, uh, go back n so we have here uh, possible sequence number 0 to 7 that means that the uh, the size of the sequence number field is 3 bits because 2 to the 3 is 8 so that will be 0 to 7 and uh, Initially, SF and SN are in uh, points to the same frame number. So when uh, when the when the sender sends frame zero, it will be in transit. So SN will move to the right. This is the next sequence number to be sent. And at the receiver end, uh, the receiver receives frame zero. So we we'll have uh, uh, the receiver will send an acknowledgement frame with number one, uh, the expected frame. So when the sender receives a f acknowledgement for frame zero, so it moves SF, and then uh, it sends frame one, okay, and then moves to frame two, and then uh, frame uh, the receiver now will send an acknowledgement uh, for frame two. However, uh, this is the send window size, so this means that the sender can send frame number two without waiting for acknowledgement of frame number two okay so it sends frame number two even though it hasn't received acknowledgement uh, frame number two because this is still within the send window okay so the receiver will receive that frame frame number two and then it will send an acknowledgement for frame number three okay so at this point, remember that acknowledgement 2 was not received, but the sender 
in any case, or, or despite acknowledgement number two failing to arrive at the sender, the sender se still sent frame number two. And then it also sent frame number three. Okay? So uh, notice at this point that uh, the sender sent frame number three without, uh, without even without receiving acknowledgement three. Okay? So when it uh, sent, uh, when the resender sent uh, frame number three, uh, the receiver sent an acknowledgement frame number four. Okay? So when acknowledgement frame number four is received, meaning there's no problem. So this is an example of a cumulative acknowledgement. It acknowledges the receipt of frames three, two, and one, even though this initial acknowledgement here failed to uh, arrive uh, to the sender side. Okay? So this one is uh, another operation of the go back and ARQ. So almost the same mechanism. So frame zero arriving, so expecting frame uh, receiver will send acknowledgement for frame one. And then uh, so the sender sent frame one, however the frame was lost, but still we have the, so it's, it, the timer hasn't expired yet for frame one. So uh, the sender continuously sends frame two, three, okay, continues frame two, okay, frame three, but uh, uh, the, at the receiver end, notice that despite uh, despite uh, receiving frame 2 and frame 3 since the receive uh, window still points to frame 1 these frames are actually discarded because the receiver is expecting frame 1 so I don't care about that drop that I, I, I don't care about frame 3 drop that but at this point the timer for the first frame expired so the sender will resend frame 1 and at this point, the frame, frame 1 was lost. At this point, the frame 1 was successfully received. So the receiver will now send an acknowledgement for acknowledgement frame number 2. Uh, and despite the sender not receiving this acknowledgement number 2 yet, it will send frame number 2, which is basically resending, and then it will also fra uh, send frame number 3. So that's what we mean by uh, go back end. Okay, so there was an erroneous frame here. The receive window did not advance. Uh, it will only advance when uh, the erroneous frame was received successfully and the succeeding frames after the ero that were sent after the erroneous frame will have to be reset. So that is the go back and ARQ. Okay? So Let's move on to the last uh, noisy channel protocol, which is the selective repeat ARQ. So the main difference between this and go back end is the selective repeat ARQ only resends frames that are in error. So it basically has a buffer to contain uh, all successfully received uh, frames and only instructs the sender to uh, resend th those frames that are in error. Okay, so uh, the advantages is uh, only damaged frames are sent, more efficient for noisy links, uh, and it requires more processing in the receiver end. And the uh, size of the send window uh, is uh, 2 to the M minus 1, okay, which has the same, should have the same size as the uh, receive window, but smaller than the go back end. So here is the the notation or the parameters so you have the sf same same uh, same description you have sn uh, the size however should be equal to 2 to the quantity m minus 1 so here we have 4 bits so the size of the send window should be 2 to the 3 so which is 8 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and the range will be 0 to 7 okay the receive window, uh, unlike in the go back end, as you can see in the go back end, uh, the receive window is of size one. Okay. However, in the selective uh, repeat, the size of the receive window is the same as the size of the send window. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the idea here is, 
since you don't want to uh, resend uh, everything, so you you allocate slots for for some of the uh, successfully received frames, and then you mark them. So this uh, this means that these are the frames that can be received and stored for later delivery. And colored boxes are already received. So uh, this example here shows that frames four, seven, and nine have been successfully received by the receiver, but still waiting for frames three, five, six. 8 and 10 okay so this is uh, the notation so notice the size of the uh, the send window and the receive window are the same and uh, the operation uh, works in this manner okay so you have uh, uh, three frames four frames okay so you have one already accepted so this can be uh, discarded already while this one are still this means here that uh, these have been acknowledged. Okay, so you have a marker here. So the window size must be mo uh, at most one half of two to the m to guarantee a proper acceptance of the frame. So uh, here you have uh, the window size of uh, two to the two. Okay, at most uh, eight, so eight. So at most one half. So of two to the m. So. This is four, so that means that the size of the sequence number field is uh, eight. One half of eight is four. So, uh, so this will be the. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry about that. So, m here is uh, uh, two. Okay. So that will be 2 to the 2 with 4 so the size of the send window must be 1 half of 4 which is 2 to be able to correctly uh, discard uh, the frame so example here frame 0 okay uh, uh, received and the acknowledgement was sent okay however it failed to re re to be uh, to be to to go to the sender so uh, the sender sent frame one, so it acknowledges frame one. So the sliding window of the receiver moves to the right, and then uh, still no acknowledgement here. So there will be a timeout. So frame zero will be discarded, and uh, uh, this one will be discarded because it's, uh, it is expecting a frame uh, uh, frames within this window size. Okay, so for the this one here. Uh, you have the size of three, which is more one uh, one more than one half of two to the m, and uh, uh, at the end of the operation, okay, uh, frame zero will be within the window, but it is not supposed to be accepted, but it was accepted because the size of the window send window uh, is uh, greater than that of uh, one half, so one 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 greater than one half of two to the m okay so we have here the operation of uh, the uh, go back uh, the selective repeat so you have frame zero okay so this is the send window uh, acknowledgement so it slides to the right frame one is lost okay frame one is lost but we still have this send window so it can send frame two Frame 2 is uh, received, uh, marked as received. However, since 2 is greater than 1, but 1 is not yet received, it sends a negative acknowledgement. And uh, this one also sends frame 3, so it was successfully received. So it still, uh, it still uh, got, it still received uh, frame 3, but it did not send an acknowledgement. So at this point, when the receiver or the sender sends negative acknowledgement one, it sends, it resends frame one. And when uh, this one is acknowledged, then uh, the uh, receiver now sends an acknowledgement act four, meaning it's expecting frame four. So notice here that the main difference with, between this and go back end is that it accepts uh, frames that are that were successfully sent after the erroneous frame so at this point mark uh, this frame is marked accepted uh, frame 3 is marked accepted only one is frame 1 is not marked accepted so 
it waits for the res uh, for the sender to resend this mark uh, mark uh, frame and after that it sends the acknowledgement form which acknowledges all the frames to the left of this uh, frame number uh, this form okay so that is the idea of uh, the selective uh, repeat operation okay so piggybacking uh, the idea of piggybacking is instead of using a separate control frame for uh, acknowledgement you send both the data and the acknowledgement in a single frame so you notice here na that is no longer just this is no longer a different frame this is the same data frame same data frame format because they are piggyback meaning you have acknowledgement and receive a uh, frame number okay so we'll stop here and we'll continue with the uh, next video